when will X metric hit in value? Um, yeah, so that's capacity planning, I mean, boiled down to a simple question. Um, sometimes it's a little, sometimes it's not that easy, but, um, but that's, that's what this is for. So I wanna talk a little bit, or just show you these two um, graphs really quick. So this is like pretty much what I would consider to be a non-seasonal time series. Um, there's a little bit of a curve there, but you can generally, just, just by looking at it, like you can tell where this is going. You can probably make a pretty decent forecast uh, as to um, where, these metri where this metric will be in a given amount of time. Um, seasonal time series uh, example. So this one is not as easy, and uh, it's, it's a little bit harder to actually make, um, just you know, with your eyeballs, to make a decent um, guess as to where these, these are. So uh, one of the things that we can do is we can actually do forecast. Um, so let's do that real quick. So this right here is a seasonal time series, and I'm gonna show you a forecast on one of those. Oh, quick, really quick, this is Edgar. So what Edgar does is uh, it makes short-term uh, forecasts, seasonal forecasts, um, using your pre-existing data. So before, this morning, I, I went and I, we use OpenTCP for some of our metrics, and um, I pulled some, uh, the, a bunch of metrics out for this presentation. This is one of those here. And you can see that there's a key for the actual name of the metric. This is, this is just a hash for the MySQL shard that this is pulled from. And then you can actually see the time series values here. So let's do a forecast on this. This right here is disk utilization. So um, the amount of, the percentage basically um, that of time that the disk is actually in use. Uh, so with Edgar, we basically just find our, our JSON that we want. So I'm gonna pick the MySQL disk utilization. Um, we describe the actual, uh, the, the data set. So this data set's actually in hours, but I'm gonna downsample it by taking the maximum of each 24 points. So that'll actually give me the, the max for each day. And I'm gonna um, describe a, f a seasonal frequency of seven, seven days, so it's a week. Um, and I'll do a forecast of 30 days. And normally this is pretty quick, but my laptop, I'm, I'm doing all the, all the forecasts on my laptop, so um, bear with me for a second. Okay, so this is, so this is a, a very small percentage of, of, of the summary that you will get from a forecast. Um, so you see the, the series name, um, and then you have forecast minimums, maximums, and then these things here are called um, prediction intervals. Um, so uh, all forecasts are, are uh, our estimates. We can't, we can't actually say with any real certainty where um, a given metric will be in, in a period of time, but what we can do is we can guess. And this is a, this is a, this is a plot of, of that forecast. Um, the orange here is 80% prediction interval and the, and the yellow is a 95% prediction interval. So if you come back here and we'll take a look at this, you can see that the maximum of our 80% um, prediction interval over the time period that I gave it, which was 30 days. So we're 80% confident that the, this, the value of this metric will be 200, less than 240 in 30 days. And we're 95% confident that uh, it'll be less than 250. And the actual forecasted uh, value is 222. Now this is, this is disk utilization um, of rate 10 volume with some SSDs on them. Um, and if, uh, so, 222 out of 600, that's about 24%. So this, this server is fine. It's, there's nothing really to be concerned about, with here. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, looking at one, one data point is not necessarily that, um, that interesting. So what we can do instead is um, we'll do a forecast on a bunch of data points. So because uh, if, you have, if you have access to your data programmatically, um, it's, you can do forecasts like these and you can determine f programmatically which nodes you should actually look at. So I said that all forecasts are, are, uh, are estimates, but um, sometimes it, if you have a lot of metrics, that it can be kind of noisy to look at hundreds and hundreds of graphs. So for the example of, of my splitting in MySQL shard, um, there's a couple different metrics that can actually lead to uh, the needing to split that chart, right? So there's disk usage, 
which is just the amount of data that it's actually on, uh, on held by this single shard. Uh, there is disk utilization, which is one forecast we just did. How busy are the disks? Can they keep up? Um, there's some other performance metrics like uh, buff buffer pool hit rate or you know amount of connections being served concurrently that might be um, important to, to, uh, to take into account into when to shard a data set. And then there's also like the range of IDs held, so maybe how many users are actually on a specific shard. Each individual metric will basically, you, you yourself probably already have thresholds for this. You don't want to be over 70% disk utilization, uh, or, or you don't want to have over um, 5 million users to a shard. So what Edgar will do for you is that you can actually pass in these thresholds and we'll do a prediction of exactly how many, well, we'll do a prediction of how many points in the future it, it will actually take to hit those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have 40 of, our, of 200 shards or something like that um, sampled for today. And once again, this is an hourly data set and I'm going to downsample it by taking the maximum of each, of every, of each 24 points, making it a daily um, uh, data set. I'm going to leave the model to automa automatic, and I'll get into that here in a moment. Um, I'm going to forecast 90, po 90 points in the future. That's my forecast horizon. So this, is, this will be a forecast for 90 days. And the threshold is going to be this big, giant number right here, which is 700 gigabytes. So let's say we don't want to have more than 700 gigabytes um, for a certain data set. Now, I'm, I'm not going to run this right, right, right now because it's on my laptop, and it'll take a fair amount of time. But I do have the output of it um, that I ran just a few moments ago. So once again, we see pretty much the same output as before, but um, you can see that it's a little bit more populated. And here we can see some of these, uh, the some new columns. Uh, so the forecast threshold is, is basically the predicted value and when that will hit the th uh, for forecast. And then we have our confidence intervals. So you can see this right here, we were very confident that in 14 days, that this node will actually hit that interval. Um, each, each, uh, sorry, uh, each uh, forecast actually. Uh, once again, I, d I exposed the plot for that forecast. So if we take a look at this one, you can see that um, uh, it's very confident that we'll hit hit it in 14 days, and, and you can kind of see why, right? This is a really easy forecast, um, but the growth velocity on this specific shard is really high. So uh, 14 days, you, you can see. The orange is the 80% prediction interval, uh, once again, and, and then yellow is the 95th percent. Um, so, you, so that one's pretty easy, and then we could basically go through and take a look at the ones that are, we're fairly certain we'll need to shard pretty soon. Um, and you can see that the plots change a little bit. So um, these ones, were, uh, this one we're a little less sure, but it's still pretty easy, um, and so on and so on. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. Thank you very much.